selection in Spectre Layers Pro 8 has been significantly enhanced. Now you can select harmonics automatically and with all the master rank functionality of the existing harmonic selection tool. Let's take a look at how it works. Listen to this synth layer. Up here in the tools panel, I'm choosing the frequency selection tool. I'm also increasing the pixel thickness by one pixel. Here I'm selecting the fundamental frequency of the first note. Hit the spacebar to hear the selection. Go to the Select menu and choose Select Harmonics. The dialog appears, and here you can choose which harmonics you'd like to select. New in Spectral Layers Pro 8, now you can choose, for example, second or third order harmonics only. This is useful for working with distortion and saturation effects. The master rank control is carried over from the harmonics selection tool of previous versions, and this is a great feature that we'll be exploring later in this tutorial. Click OK and make the selection. Press the space bar to hear the selection. Let's take a step back and talk about the master rank feature. Here we are back at the start. We have the synth layer. And below this, I have a second layer called Low Rumble. When both layers are active, you can clearly see the fundamental frequency embedded in the noise. Up here in the display panel, I'm switching into Composite View mode. Here you can see how deeply the tone is embedded in the noise. This is where the master rank control becomes useful. OK, I have merged the two layers together to create a use case. Let's make a selection. Here I'm selecting the seventh harmonic. It lies mostly outside the noise field, so I have a relatively clear shot at selecting it. In the Select Harmonics dialog, I'm choosing a master rank of seven, which corresponds with the seventh harmonic I selected. Now when I click OK, you can see that the resulting selection reaches both above and below the seventh harmonic, all the way down to the fundamental, which is buried in noise. Let's listen to all ten harmonics. And here I'm using the Rectangular Selection tool in Subtract from Selection mode to remove the top five harmonics. We can addition the bottom five in isolation, the ones embedded in the noise. Now I'm using the same tool to subtract every remaining harmonic except for the fundamental. Let's listen to that in isolation. Great, we dug it out of the noise. Back to the synth track. Here we're zoomed in on the first seven harmonics of the first note. Select the sampler tool. Hovering over the fundamental, you can see that it registers at minus 6.4 dB. The seventh harmonic is softer, coming in at about minus 48. Select the eraser tool. In the configuration panel, activate the new limit feature. I'm dialing in a limit of minus 48.5 which is the amplitude of the seventh harmonic. Here I'm attenuating the fundamental. No matter how many times I drag the eraser tool over it, its amplitude will never fall below that of the seventh harmonic because we've engaged the new limit feature on the eraser tool. Let's go up and turn the limit function off and go back to version seven functionality. With no limit, I can erase my way all the way down to silence. With the limit feature engaged though, we're prevented from going too far. And not only that, we can choose amplitude points on the spectral graph that define precisely targeted limits. The amplifier tool has this new limit functionality as well. Here I'm selecting the tool and configuring it with a limit of minus 6.4 dB, which, as you might recall, is the exact amplitude of the fundamental frequency as measured by the sampler tool. Now I can amplify the seventh harmonic with the assurance that my max amplitude will never exceed minus 6.4 dB. And here we are with our synth sound that now has the seventh harmonic of the first note amplified to match the fundamental. This video certainly favors concepts over content. But coincidentally, I found it very interesting that raising the harmonic in the first note actually serves to establish a key. This operation motivated me to take the synth layer over to Cubase, where I used it to produce the simple background music for this video. 
Spectra Layers is inspiring. Speaking of key and pitch, here's another new Spectra Layers feature, musical pitch shifting. Go to the Tools panel and select the Transform tool. Switch from percentage to the music note. Here I'm using the Time Range tool to select the last of the four notes. And here comes a two semitone downward shift. Spectra Layers 8 improvements that benefit all users will be particularly useful to sound designers. These include improved selection and preview tools, improved copy-paste functionality, more accurate pitch shifting, the ability to save and recall multiple selections with projects, and the ability to focus the application far more tightly in ARA mode when working in Cubase. What benefits one benefits all. We hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Spectra Layers Pro 8 delivers audio empowerment. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Steinberg channel.